What is up you guys? This is Mini Superheroes Today. This video will contain massive, massive spoilers for the show Loki, so if you're worried about spoilers or you haven't finished it yet, be sure to finish the series and then come back and watch this video. With that being said, here we go. Hey guys, wow, Loki was absolutely amazing, wasn't it? I love the series, the finale was so, so incredible. And with that being said, that means it's time for a showcase where I show you how to build every figure from the series. Now there are more figures than the ones you see right here because I've got some surprises along the way. And of course, there's gonna be a big reveal at the end for the final episode. If you've seen the last episode, you know what I'm talking about, but just like the real show, I'm gonna make you wait till the end to see that character. With that being said, there is a Marvel collectible minifigure series on the way, and in that we're supposed to be getting a few characters and figures from Loki. This video is coming out before that is even revealed, so with that being said, I would highly recommend using whatever figures come in the CMF for your Loki collection, but as of this video, that's not available, so I'm gonna build them from scratch, and maybe we'll redo this someday when those figures come out, or I'll just update those figures. Speaking of which, be sure to hit like and subscribe down below, and without further Without further ado, let's jump into the actual video. Where's Loki? So the show starts off with us following 2012 Loki where he zaps himself elsewhere using the Tesseract, causing a branch timeline, and well, you know the rest from there. So to build this, I used the 2012 Loki legs and torso, because I think that those obviously represent that era of the character well. I used a dark green cape, coming a lot of places. Then I used black arms to help bring in a little more darkness to the costume with some tan hands a clear one by one brick for the Tesseract. I used this face from Star Wars from one of the uh, bomber characters because it's got that face mask on there. And then I used this long black hair and ironically, if you flip it around, it actually makes a half decent face for Tom Hiddleston, but I actually use a different head throughout this showcase. With that being said, let's move on to our next character. I knew I had a jet ski. Well, all right, we're gonna build Mobius. Yeah, so here's how to build Lego Mobius. And uh, yeah, so let's get into it. The head comes from Vernon Dursley from Lego Harry Potter. He came in the four privet drive set. The hair is from Old Man Han Solo from Lego Star Wars The Force Awakens. The torso comes from Commissioner Gordon from Lego Batman, and the legs are just some plain khaki legs. I really love the way this figure came together, and hopefully Lego gives us a real version someday. Here we have Hunter B-15, who ended up playing a very pivotal role in the show. And to build her, I used the legs from the Death Trooper from Lego Star Wars Rogue One. The torso is flipped around, but it's actually one of the Death Star Trooper characters. I think turned around to give her that vest look actually looks really, really great. The face, or the head, I guess is the better piece to call it, is from Okoye from Lego Black Panther. And then I just gave her this black helmet that really helps round out the figure. Glorious purpose. Here we've got Loki in his TVA prisoner outfit, and I love the way this one turned out. I used the torso for Squidward from SpongeBob because there aren't a lot of like light khaki colored torsos. So that one worked well. I got arms that matched with tan hands. The legs come from Obi-Wan from Lego Star Wars, just to add a little texture on the legs. And then the hair and face come from Loki from Thor Ragnarok, which is my favorite Loki head to date and the one that you'll see me use the most throughout this showcase. Here we've got Renslayer, and she was a really great character in the show, but of course she did have a brown suit, but I went with this blue one from Barbara Gordon from the Lego Batman movie because I like all of the metals on it, and it really looks the part even if it's not quite the right color. If you guys have a suggestion otherwise, let me know, but that's where the torso came from. The legs come from Owen Grady from Lego Jurassic World, or at least that's where the belt came from. I might have made that uh, up by switching out some regular legs. Anyways, the hair is just a regular old black uh, ponytail, which has come in millions of places. And then, of course, the face is from MJ from Lego Spider-Man. I have a bomb. Next up is Loki as D.B. Cooper. And to build this figure, I used the hair, torso, and legs from Bruce Wayne, the most recent version of Bruce Wayne as of this video. I gave him a little briefcase to hold all the money as he jumps out of the plane. And the face is actually from Agent Coulson from Lego Marvel from a few years years back. Gotta love those big giant aviator shades. What's a fish? Here we have Casey, who is the TVA worker with all the Infinity Stones, and because of that I gave him a little stud there to represent one of the Infinity Stones. 
Anyways, he's just got regular black legs since he's, uh, you know, an office worker. The torso comes from Mole Man from the Lego Simpsons collectible minifigure series. The arms come from the Lego Soccer uh, CMF series, or football, depending on where you are in the world. Then, of course, the face is from Agent Wu, or rather Dr. Wu from Jurassic World. Sorry, it's early when I'm filming this. <laughs> then I just gave him some regular black hair. So, uh, pretty awesome, and I love the way this turned out. Even though he didn't have a huge role in the show, it's definitely fun to make some of these side characters. You're in my way. Here we have a Sylvie custom, and as I mentioned earlier in the video, there will be actual figures for Loki that come in the LEGO Marvel Collectible Minifigure Series, and Sylvie is one of them. So, uh, unfortunately, as of this video, that's not out yet, but once that figure is out, I would recommend using that. Or if you don't have it, you could go ahead and build it this way. I use this long blonde hair that comes from Thor from LEGO Marvel. The face is from the Gal Gadot Justice League version of Wonder Woman, because then you get that nice little crown piece up there that kind of represents the horn uh, crown piece that Sylvie wears. The torso is from the 2020 version of Loki. I think that actually works really well for Sylvie, honestly. But to complement that, I added black arms with tan hands on both sides. I added a black cape from the Mandalorian Battle Pack, which is nice and cheap, easy to get. Then the legs, as you guys know, I use these legs a lot. They are from the Lego Star Wars Imperial Engineer character. I just like black legs that have a little bit of texture on them. It kind of looks like boots or like leather pants. I just think they work really well for making customs. And then this dagger came in several sets from like Lord of the Rings, The Hobbit, Prince of Persia, that era of Lego sets. I just think it's a nice little compliment for Sylvie and she was probably my favorite character in the show. So I'm definitely glad to add her to the showcase. And for one more note on Sylvie, since she isn't always wearing the helmet piece with the horns, I actually like the face from Laura Dern's character, Ellie Sattler, from Jurassic Park as the face for Sylvie if you want to use an alternate face. Let me see the back of that jacket. Next up, we've got Loki in his TVA trench coat. I love the way this figure turned out, and to build it, I used the torso from Ross from the Lego Friends Central Park set. The head and hair, of course, are from the Ragnarok version of Loki. Then I just threw some dark brown pants on there to round the whole figure out. Here we've got Sylvie as a little girl from that scene where she gets captured by the TVA. I used some long dark brown hair here, come in several places. I used one of these sad child faces which have come in other places as well, including the Lego Jurassic Park set uh, that I just mentioned earlier for the face for Sylvie. The torso is actually the Knight Rider torso flipped around. They used it on one of the bad guys from Spider-Man Homecoming as well, but it's come in a couple places, so just flip that around, threw some dark pants on there, like their short legs that is, and that's all there is to this character. Ah, oh, Miss Minutes. Here we've got Miss Minutes, and it's technically one of our only non-minifigure builds here, but I think it turned out really well for what we have to work with. The face, of course, is from Cogsworth from the Lego Disney Princesses line because there really aren't a lot of round faces with a clock feature on it and, you know, an eyeballs and a mouth, so I feel like this really is the best purest option to build a Miss Minutes. Now, flipping it around, you can see that that's just a 2x2 two two round piece, and there are actually some pieces connected to the back. So these one by one white pieces with the clips serve as the hands and those clip into the same style of piece but in black that face downward and clip into these one by one clip pieces that serve as the feet. From the side or maybe from the back it doesn't look so great but if you're just looking to make some stop motions or things like that from the front it actually does look pretty dang good. Sif. One of the best cameos this season was from Lady Sif, who we haven't seen in the MCU in years. So it was really awesome to have her back for that short sequence. And to build her, I used this long black hair, come in a lot of places, but it does look really good. The face is from Rey from Lego Star Wars. Then the torso is from Cyborg from Lego DC, the most recent version of the comics version of Cyborg uh, from the sets, not the CMF that is. Then the arms come from a couple different places like Vacation Robin from the Lego Batman CMF series or from Hyperion from Lego Marvel. 
pretty cool there. You'll see in her hand, she's holding a locket of hair since the setup is that Loki cut off some of her hair. So that piece comes from the genie from Lego Disney collectible minifigure series, specifically from Aladdin. She's got this skirt piece here. I'm pretty sure it's from Ninjago, but honestly, I don't remember. You can drop a comment below and let me know. And you'll see the legs there are using those Lego Star Wars Imperial Engineer character legs that I use so often that we used on Sylvie just a little bit ago in this video. It's around this time in the chronology of the show that we got to meet the Loki variants, so let's start off with Boastful Loki. The head that I used to build this is from the Lego Batman movie accessory pack, which had one of the cops in there that used a head just like this. The neck piece comes from Kraven the Hunter from Lego Spider-Man. I gave some black arms with brown hands. Then the uh, torso here comes from Amy Fowler from the Lego Big Bang Theory set, which is relatively rare these days, but it works well for this to kind of give him that Celtic look. Speaking of, I used uh, Mjolnir here since this version of Loki is apparently worthy enough to have the hammer. And then the legs actually come from the Celtic Batman from the Lego Batman movie. I think this figure tied together really well, and I'd love to hear what you guys think. Here we've got Kid Loki, and I love the way he turned out as well. To build this, I used some short black legs, since of course he is the youngest version of Loki that we've met so far. The torso comes from Lex Luthor from Lego Batman. I guess technically Lego DC, but oh well. He's got black arms, and one arm has a black hand, because observant viewers will see that he actually had a glove on. The face comes from Shang-Chi, but uh, also from Happy Hogan. Oddly enough, kind of a weird choice. Then, of course, the hair is uh, the Bruce Banner hair, but I used some clippers and I cut the sideburns off the side since, you know, somebody of his age probably wouldn't have sideburns. And then for one little added detail, I went ahead and added the Boba Fett cape to the back, and I think that that just adds some nice detail and a little bit of depth to the character as well. Perhaps our simplest custom is this Crocodile Alligator Loki. I'd love to know what you guys thought of Crocodile Alligator Loki. Is he a croc or is he an alligator? Honestly, I don't know the difference, so I'm gonna call them both. So to build this, I just used a Lego alligator body piece, and then I took a Loki helmet and I stretched it out over his head, but I did put some blue sticky tack in there, which you can see if I move him around, and that sticky tack just helps hold it in place. It actually, from a distance, you can't hardly tell, but up close you could tell a little more, but it does look really good and it's our best option as of this video for building a character like this. Here we've got classic Loki, which is definitely one of my favorite Loki variants. The face comes from Magneto from Lego Marvel, but I think they used it on Gandalf as well. The helmet, of course, is just a regular old Loki helmet, come in a lot of places as of this video. The torso comes from the Mighty Micros version of Loki, which of course was based on the comics version. The cape comes from Vision, because interestingly enough, there are not a lot of full-sized yellow capes in the Lego line, so that's kind of unique. The arms come from the pizza delivery guy from the Lego collectible minifigure series, and on that figure, it's supposed to be like a yellow skin character with short green sleeves, but here it actually is short green sleeves with yellow gloves, which works so well. I put some yellow hips on there because, of course, the character kind of has his underoos on. And those yellow hips are relatively rare because LEGO doesn't give out a lot of pieces like that since you can technically make, like, naked minifigures. And, well, that's kind of awkward. So those are pretty rare, but I pulled those from the LEGO Movie 2 set, which was kind of like the Benny's Battle Pack, if you will. So those come from the uh, yellow space trooper uh, astronaut character. And then the legs come from LEGO City from the Fun at the Beach set. And once again, those are supposed to be like swimming trunks for a character wearing green shorts with exposed legs. But in this context, they're yellow boots on green pants. You gotta love the creativity that Lego lets us have. <sighs> Hello. Here we've got Lego Loki, which is really awesome, but it's the president version of Loki. I gotta give a shout out to my friend Lego Boy 95 for suggesting to use the torso from Filch, I think is his name, from Lego Harry Potter. Kind of gives you that nice trench coat look with the gray jacket, and it adds some green on the torso too, so that's pretty awesome. The legs, you know where those are from by now. Those are from the Lego Star Wars Engineer character, and you probably can guess that the hair and head are from Ragnarok Loki as well. Unbelievably, this show brought Throg into the MCU, which of course is the 
frog version of Thor. There is a rumor that a figure like this could appear in the Lego collectible minifigure series for Marvel, but until then, here's a quick way to build it using existing Lego pieces. I took a Mjolnir piece, a frog Lego piece, then just a piece of red paper, and uh, well, it was white paper that I colored red with a Sharpie. I cut out a little hole and put it on the frog piece, and then I just took a little bit of blue sticky tack to put the hammer at his side, because then you can have both together, and oh no, I guess the hammer is fallen off. Anyways, you can see it is pretty flimsy, but it's definitely a good alternative if you're not going to get the CMF figure, or if you just want to build it right now and you're impatient like me. For the final episode, we see Loki manifest himself some shoulder straps and a golden sword. I got the golden sword from this unicorn character from the LEGO CMF series. Then the torso is actually Nick Fury from the Captain Marvel set, uh, because that gives you a really nice shoulder strap, and the white shirt with the black tie. Talk about lucky. I used uh, some black legs on there, and then I used the arms from Dorothy from the Lego Movie 2 collectible minifigure series, and you guessed it, the head and hair are from Ragnarok Loki. For the majority of the show, Loki is running around in a white shirt and tie, which isn't all that exciting as far as superhero movies go, but I do think it worked out pretty well. To build it in Lego form, you guessed it, the hair and head are from the Ragnarok version of Loki. The torso is from Mole Man from the Lego Simpsons line, with the arms, which give you short sleeves on top and then tan hands on bottom, that come from Dorothy from the Lego Movie 2 collectible minifigure series. Then I just put some black legs on there to round out the build. Not what you were expecting, hmm? And to me, the craziest part of this show was it ending with us meeting Kang the Conqueror. Well, more specifically, he's the one who remains here, but we know that Jonathan Majors is playing the real Kang, which is gonna be coming up in future MCU installments. I can't wait. Anyways, to build him from the final episode of Loki, I used the hair from Finn from The Rise of Skywalker, but it's come in many places. The face is from Mordo from Lego Doctor Strange. I think that that worked out really well, actually. The arms come from Catwoman from the Lego Batman movie, and they're put on the torso and legs of the Doctor Who minifigure from the Doctor Who set. Then turning him on his side, you can see I put an apple in his hand because he's eating an apple when we first meet him. And I used this cape from the Lego Harry Potter collectible minifigure series too. So with that being said, let's zoom out and I'll give you my final thoughts on this showcase. All right, guys. Well, thanks for hanging out with me today and looking at these awesome customs. Let me know which ones were your favorite in the comments below and be sure to let me know what you're most looking forward to next from the MCU. Be sure to hit like and subscribe again and I'll see you guys on the next video. Well, you've made it to the end of the video. You should hit like and subscribe down below for more LEGO content from me because I post just about every single day. You'll be up to date on all the latest in LEGO, so why not join my community and hit subscribe now.